Good morning, Circle Church. I am so excited that today we are starting the first sermon in our series, Getting to Know Jesus. The purpose of this whole series is to go back to the basics and the foundation of this Christian faith that we walk. So this is a perfect series to get your new convert friends there, or maybe someone who hasn't even made the decision yet to follow Jesus that wants to know more about Christianity, about Jesus himself, the whole basis of this faith. This is the series to get in on. It's called Getting to Know Jesus. Jesus, where we're going to be exploring the book of John, starting in the first chapter, and we're going to go through that entire book together and dissect the passages that we read to, again, build a foundation on the Word of God of what we believe, what this is all about. So I'm excited today is the first day of that series. So go ahead and take a moment right now and share this video. You need to share it with all your family members, all your friends, anyone who wants to know more about what is this, what's the foundation of the Christian faith. That's what we're going to be talking about in this series. And today, the first message of that series is titled New Identity. So we're going to jump right in, but before I do, I want to open up in a word of prayer and just ask that God would speak to you through this time together, that it wouldn't be my words, but it would be his words spoken through me as a vessel. So Father God, we just give you this time together. Lord, I pray for every person that is watching this uh, video right now, this teaching right now. God, I pray that this would bring revelation Lord, I pray that through this time together, you would speak to people. And those who have maybe even questioned whether this is all real or not, maybe have questioned whether you are really there and hearing their prayers, I pray that this message, this time together, this series, God, over the next few weeks, would be the confirmation that they need, first and foremost, that you love them, that you hear them, and that you are waiting for them to come to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, we're going to jump right into the Word of God. I've got some people here with me today. Feel free to talk back to me because this is more of a teaching style. And as those of you who know, if you followed my ministry for any period of time, I'm more of a preacher. So this is different. I'm sitting on this velvety couch right now. What's the type of this material? This is like velvet, right? So it's a little bit out of my comfort zone. I don't really like the way this couch feels, to be honest with you. And likewise, I don't like sitting down and preaching from an iPad, but we're going to get through it together because it's not my words, it's God's words, and he's going to speak them to you today. So John 1, if you have your Bibles, tablets, phones, go to John chapter 1, verses 1 through 13. That's going to be the entire passage for our message today. And I'm preaching out of the New Living Translation, which is abbreviated NLT. There are multiple different translations of the Bible. In fact, many different translations of the Bible. So if you're reading scripture, sometimes what you're reading may sound different than what I'm reading. That's because it's a different version of the Bible. Again, I'm using the New Living Translation if you want to follow along in that version. If not, any other version will suffice. John chapter 1, verses 1 through 13. We're going to read the whole passage together, and then we're going to dissect it. In the beginning, the Word already existed. The Word was with God, and the Word was God. He existed in the beginning with God. God created everything through Him, and nothing was created except through Him. The Word gave life to everything that was created, and His light his life brought light to everyone. The light shines in the darkness and the darkness can never extinguish it. God sent a man, John the Baptist, to tell about the light so that everyone might believe because of his testimony. John himself was not the light. He was simply a witness to tell about the light. The one who is the true light who gives light to everyone was coming into the world. Verse 10, he came into the world, he created but the world didn't recognize him. He came to his own people and even they rejected him. But to all who believed him and accepted him, he gave the right to be children of God. They are reborn, not with a physical birth resulting from human passion or plan, but a birth that comes from God. So that's the entire passage. Now let's look at that again. The title of this teaching today is a new identity. How many of you have ever seen those spy movies where inevitably the spy gets found out? At one point or another, the authorities stumble upon their, their hotel room and look in a suitcase and they open it up and we, it's a classic scene that we see again and again in all the different spy movies. There's a bunch of passports because those people have fake identities. They're identities that are aliases to, they use to get in through different customs of different uh, countries to get to different places. Well, Many times we operate with fake identities. 
identities that are imposed upon us by people around us, identities that we have to adopt because of situations that we've gone through in our lives. A way of coping is by having different identities. What do I mean by that? We morph to the situation that we're in many times. So when we're in work, we have our work identity, our work passport, right? When we're at home with our family, we have our home passport. When we're at church, we have our church passport, right? Certain certain words are not eligible when we're using our church passport. But when we're at home or when we're uh, out to eat with our friends, there are other words that we use when we're using that identity. But I want to just push all of that aside today and say that whatever identity you have been operating under, whatever aliases you have been using, today is the day to set them all at the feet of the cross. Today is the day to push them all before the Lord and say, God, here are all of my identities. Here are all of my aliases. I want to sacrifice these so that I can take on the new identity that you have for me in my life of Christ. The problem is if we're not willing to first and foremost acknowledge these different identities and ultimately put them at the feet of Jesus and say, here, Jesus, take them the work that he wants to do can never fully be done to the depth that he wants it to be done. Because if we come before him saying, here's my, here's my identity, but we're only really giving him one identity, we're only really showing him one side. Can I tell you something? Jesus wants the dirty side. Jesus wants the things that you think disqualify you. Jesus wants all of you, those parts of your heart that have been so guarded for so long, we're gonna have to give it all to Jesus today to assume the new identity that we want to assume through Christ Jesus. Amen? Amen. Okay, so number one, who is Jesus? Well, we believe in the Holy Trinity. Matthew 28, 19 says, therefore go and make disciples of all nations. This is the great commission. Let me just back up and say for a moment, this is the purpose of Circle Church. If you ask, what are we about? What's our vision statement? What, what, What are our goals? What are our values? This is it right here, Matthew 28, 19. This is the DNA and the purpose of existence for Circle Church. Therefore, go and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. So we as Christ followers believe in the Holy Trinity. It's a three in one. That means that Jesus is part of a three person union. It is the depiction of perfect unity that God the Father gives us as an example to to live out as a church, right? The bride of Christ with Jesus, we're in that perfect unity. As husbands and wives, we believe that marriage is between one man and one woman. That unity is a depiction and an example of the unity that Christ came to give us. But we believe that Jesus is part of the Trinity. God is three distinct persons combined into one living being. Now, this is a lot to take in, especially if you're new to all of this. This is, this is a foreign concept, and I want to encourage you, don't get too caught up into this just yet. As we go on in time and as we continue to go on to this path of discipleship, we're going to talk more about the Trinity and the function of the three different people, again, recognizing and acknowledging that they are all, in fact, one God, one person. But rather than get in too much into depth about the Trinity today, we are going to focus on the person of Jesus Christ. Again, the title of this entire series is Getting to Know Jesus. So that's who we're going to be talking about today. But it is important that we note he is one of three, right? We have God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. They are all one being. John 1, 1 through 3. Let's go back to the beginning um, of our text here in the passage, and we're going to look at this, this passage here together. In the beginning, the Word already existed. The Word. Now, I want you to notice the word Word is capitalized. Why is that? Because it's talking about a person. John is referring to a person. Who do you think that person is based on who we've been talking about so far in this sermon? Jesus, Jesus is the word. That's why the word that we read is so powerful because he is the living word of God. So this book that we read of the Bible, this isn't just another book. This isn't just another piece of literature. This is the living word of God as we read it. I've been reading the Bible for years now and it's incredible how I can read the same passage that I've read so many times over and get so many different things out of it that I never saw before. Why? Because it's constantly evolving in our understanding. It's constantly showing us things that we didn't see before. The word of God is living. So in the beginning, the word already existed. The 
word was with God and the word was God. Again, that is evidence of the concept I just shared with you, the Trinity. God is three in one person. So if Jesus is the word, but it's saying Jesus is God, the three are in fact one. He existed in the beginning, verse two, with God. God created everything through him and nothing was created, let this sink in for a minute, except through him. Nothing was created except through him. So for those who believe that Jesus stepped into the scene in the New Testament, that is debunked right here through this passage. Jesus is not a New Testament character that just came about 2,000 years ago. Jesus was there creating the universe. Oh, I feel the power of God. The same power that spoke the universe into existence is that same power that raised Jesus up out of a tomb on the third day. Jesus is the creator. Right, So let's talk about creation for a minute. As Christ followers, we believe in the biblical account of creation. We do not, in fact, believe that we came from monkeys, although some would lend a lot of evidence toward that based on their behavior. We don't believe that we came from monkeys, okay? We don't believe that something just happened and there was a massive bang. In the, I mean, maybe there was a bang in the universe as a result of God speaking, right? It might've been interpreted as a bang. I don't know the answer to that question, but we don't believe that we are here by happenstance. We believe that there was a creator who methodically and intentionally spoke everything that is into existence according to the word of God. Let's look at Genesis 1, one through three. This is the account of creation in the beginning. And many of you, even if you don't profess to be a Christian, even if you don't profess to belong to this faith, have probably heard this passage because it's so popular, right? In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep and the spirit of God was hovering over the waters. And God said, let there be light. Somebody say light right now. Type it in the chat, say light, and there was light. Now, God created the heavens and the earth. When we read that passage, based on the understanding that we just grabbed a couple minutes ago, it changes things. Because I, for one, who have grown up in this, used to always view it as, well, God the Father was there creating everything. But in actuality, as we saw in the passage in the book of John, Jesus was there creating everything with God. Again, it was all being done in perfect unison and perfect unity together. So again, Jesus is not a New Testament character. He is in fact God. He was in fact here before time itself began. So to conclude this portion of the sermon, who is Jesus? Jesus is the creator of all mankind. Jesus is the creator of of everything that is. Okay, so we've established that Jesus is the creator of the universe and that he was present with the Father during creation. So my second point today is why did Jesus come to the earth? One word for that answer, and the word is darkness. Jesus came to the earth because of darkness. Let's keep looking at our passage today. John 1 Verses four and five, the word gave life to everything that was created and his life brought what? Light, light to everyone. The light shines in the darkness and the darkness can never extinguish it. Now, what kind of darkness is this referring to? Well, first of all, why would there need to be light unless there was darkness? See, when God created man, he created us with this innate ability to make our own choices. He gave us free will as human beings. This is the beauty of creation. It's the beauty of the plan of life for human beings, that God gave us the choice to either choose him or not to choose him, right? He, he's not making that decision. He's not up there moving all the pieces around like a chess, a chess board. He's, he's given us the will to choose whether we want to accept this gift of grace, this gift of light, or whether we want to reject it. That is our choice. No one is going to make that for us. So what happened? God created the heavens and the earth. He created man. He created all of the creatures that, that, that scurry along the earth. And man, because of evil in our hearts, turned away from God and progressively continued to deteriorate and get more and more separated from God, more and more evil, more and more involved in man-made constructs that God never intended us for, for us to get involved with. And so God, again, Jesus is God, God is Jesus, came to the earth in human form to 
get rid of and eradicate the darkness. The Bible says in Ephesians 6, 12, for we are not fighting against flesh and blood enemies, but against evil rulers and authorities of the unseen world. Listen, against mighty powers in this what? You should see that word right there in this dark world and against evil spirits in heavenly places. So when the book of John is referring to him coming and shining light on the darkness, it's referring to a spiritual darkness. You know, many times we can be driving through a city and feel a spiritual darkness. How many have ever had that happen? Even if you don't profess to be a Christian, you can feel things about different environments. Those who are in the new age world and who are out there in the secular world who don't believe like we believe would call it energy, right? Oh, it's positive energy, negative energy. There's flows of different types of energies and different types of sources of power and light. And the bottom line is this, and I'm gonna explain it to you very clearly the way I've explained it many times over. If you've ever seen the movie Star Wars, there are two types of force, right? We have the light and we have the dark side. The light side, the dark side, the light side, the dark side. Where do you think the premise for that and really every other plot and every other movie, good versus evil, where do you think that originated? It came from what I'm talking to you about today. There is in fact a power of darkness. There is in fact the kingdom of darkness. And there is in fact a ruler of darkness whose entire purpose is to destroy your life. Yes, you. I'm not talking in generalities. I'm talking to the person watching this video right now. The ruler of darkness named Satan has one purpose and one purpose alone, and it is to ensure that your soul does not make it to heaven. How does he do that? Through spreading darkness in the world, through spreading his kingdom out. His, the devil operates in the shadows. Where there is light, the enemy is not comfortable. He cannot be around light for too long. Why? Because he becomes exposed. The Bible says he comes as an angel of light, but eventually the true light, the Bible says the Holy Spirit is the spirit of truth, will expose the devil for who he is. So he doesn't like light. He's the ruler of the dark ages, of the, of the darkness, right? He likes to remain in the shadows. But Jesus came to get rid of the darkness. He came to eradicate and get rid of the kingdom of the enemy. I think about our first converts with Circle Church. I won't say their names for the sake of, of, of them renaming, remaining anonymous, but they're dear friends of mine to this day. They're, they're, they're involved with our ministry. And I remember before they gave their, lights to, their lives to Jesus, I was in their house. They were dealing with some pretty heavy spiritual situations, some paranormal activity in their house. And we opened up, I was at the time working on their, their bathroom as a contractor. That's how we met when we were actually neighbors in Florida. And we started talking and I was talking with my friend. I said, you know, exactly what I just told you. There's a light side, there's a dark side. Yes, there's power in the dark, but the true power, the authentic power, the power that will ultimately win the war comes from Jesus. It's the power of light. It's the power that gives us authority over the kingdom of darkness. And I began to speak this truth to him. Well, then his wife came in. We spoke for about two or three hours that night. And the Bible says, you will know the truth and the truth will make you free. As I spoke truth, the Holy Spirit began to do a work on these two incredible people's heart. He began to minister to them, not in a way that I could. All I could do was speak the truth, but then he had to come and change their hearts and remove the darkness. See, when the light comes in, even if it's a small light, it could be such thick darkness. So you can almost feel like you can cut it with a knife. How many have ever been out in their yard at night, late at night, where there's no stars out, the moon's out, it's cloudy. You can almost feel the darkness. But all it takes is really the flashlight on your phone. I don't have my phone. I just gave it away because I was getting distracted with it. Where's it at? Let me borrow your phone real quick. Look at this pretty case. This little light right here, the darkness can be so vast and so massive, but when you pull this light out, suddenly that light spreads so much bigger than the darkness. And that's what Jesus does. When he steps into a place, his light will get rid of the darkness. So I began to share with this couple, thanks for that. I began to share with this couple about the light of Jesus. Long story short, God showed up in a powerful way. They accepted Jesus and we got rid of all of those tormenting spirits. What do I mean by that? I mean tormenting spirits. I mean spirits of darkness that would come and, and, and plague their mind with anxiety. All of these things that they were experiencing, their children... And just like that, Jesus came in in an instant and got rid of all of those things and brought freedom to that home. I'm here to tell you today, whatever you're facing, 
Jesus can step in in an instant and get rid of all of that darkness with his light. Amen. John 1, 5, the light shines in the darkness and the darkness can never extinguish it. I don't know about you, but I don't always do it right the first time. I'm so glad that he comes in after we've messed up and brings light, right? Because of Adam and Eve and their mistake in the garden, right? If you read the account of creation, the Bible says God created man, he created woman. They messed up. They ate of the forbidden fruit. And so we as a human race, when Adam messed up, he messed up for all of us. But we have a loving father. We have a loving God who even knowing that we would mess up had a solution for us. And that solution is the light of Jesus Christ. I'm grateful for it. How about you? Are you grateful for the light of Jesus that comes in and shines into the darkest areas of our lives and brings freedom? Amen. So why did he come to earth? He came to earth to redeem all mankind. Point number one, He came to create mankind. Number two, he came to redeem all mankind. So we've established that Jesus is the creator of all mankind and that he is the light of the world who redeems all of mankind. Now, let's get to the point at hand, the issue at hand here, the whole premise of my message, our new identity. Who am I in Christ? We've established who Jesus is, right? He's the creator of the universe. He's God, He came to the earth as a baby boy incarnate, God incarnate, so that he could die on the cross and then ultimately redeem mankind. Because how many know we were in need of a redeemer? We were in need of the light of Jesus. But lastly, as I close today, who am I in Christ? What is my new identity? If I have all of these other identities that have been uh, competing for the number one seat, right? All these different conflicted opinions about who I am, who the world said I am, who my family members have said I am, who my friends say that I am, but who does Jesus say that I am? What is my new identity? Let's look at the last part of our passage here. John 1, 6 through 12. It says, God sent a man, John the Baptist, to tell about the light so that everyone might believe because of his authority. John himself was not the light, right? There's only one light, it's Jesus. He was simply a witness to tell about the light. The one who is the true light, who gives light to everyone, was coming into the world. He came into the very world he created. Again, proof of creation. Jesus is the creator. But the world didn't recognize him. He came to his own people and even they rejected him. Look at this. This is it right here. This is the whole conclusion and summary of what we've been talking about today. But to all, 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 all. To all who believed in him, and accepted him, he gave the right to become children of God. So who are you? You are a child of God through Christ Jesus. So every conflicting thought, right? Every contrary thought, every opinion against the truth of Jesus, you now have the authority to say, be silenced in the name of Jesus, because he came so that I could be a child of God. Why? Because I believe in him. I believe that he is real. I believe that he is the Christ. I believe that he is God. I believe that he is the creator of the universe. And I believe he's the redeemer of all mankind. So number one, I believed in him and I accepted him. Therefore, I am now a child of God. This is the most important part about the Christian faith. It is your identity and realizing who you are. Because listen to me, if the devil can confuse you about your identity, everything else will crumble. When you go through difficult situations, you have to have a solid foundation on your identity in Jesus Christ, in Jesus Christ, in Jesus Christ. He is the solid rock. He is the foundation. And because of him, We are now children of God. I don't know about you, but as a parent, when my child makes a mistake, I don't disown him for making that mistake. And that's where the lie of the devil will come in. Even with me, even with those of us who have been in this for years and years and years, when the devil attacks you, he always attacks identity, right? If you are the son of God, he used the same tactic with Jesus. How stupid. He used it with the creator of the universe. If you are the son of God, 
right? When he came and tempted him in the wilderness, he always comes and attacks your identity. Did God really say that he was going to be with you? Did God really say that he was going to watch over you? Did God really say that you were special? Did God really say that you were? He always attacks identity. So we have to grab a hold of this, right? If you don't remember anything else from this teaching, remember John 1, 12, but to all, that means to you, to you who believed in him and accepted him, he has now given you the right to become children of God. And so how do you exercise that authority when the devil tries to come back in with thoughts that are contrary to the word of God, with thoughts of insufficiency, with thoughts of inadequacy, with thoughts of insecurity, with thoughts of anxiety, you have to remind him of this passage. Listen, it's not enough to use your own words. You have to use the words of light. You have to use the words of Jesus. You have to use the word of God. He is the living word. And what happens? Because he is the living word, the word of God, the Bible, he is the word. As you begin to use the word, the word will combat against those thoughts for you. The word will combat against the enemy for you. So when you say, you know what, devil? Yeah, all of these things may have been true of my past, my previous identities, all those other passports that are in that suitcase. That may be true what you're saying about those people, but it is not true about me. Why? Because I am a child of God, because I've believed in him and I've accepted him. Amen? Amen. And there may be that one person right now, you know who you are, that's watching this teaching that says, all that sounds great, but you don't know what I've done. You don't know where I've been. You don't know what's been done to me to lead me down the path that I find myself on today. And I want to tell you that that passage says, but to all, but to all. It does not say to all those who haven't crossed this line, to all those who haven't made this mistake, to all those who haven't committed this sin, it just simply says to all who believed in him and accepted him. So you fall into that category, friend. You fall into that category of all. I don't care what you've done. I don't. Because when you accept Jesus, everything that you've done becomes part of your old life. Let's read verse 13, the last pre- verse in that passage. It says, John 1, 13, they are what? Reborn. 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 So when the enemy starts telling you all the things that you've done, all the reasons why you're disqualified and, and you can't accept this gift, and all you say, yeah, 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 that's right about the old me. That's right about those aliases that I had. That's right, that's right about the fake identities. But according to the word of God, according to the word of truth, according to the living word, creative word, powerful word, the word of light, the word of Jesus, it says they are reborn, not with a physical birth resulting from human passion or plan, but a birth that comes from God. So you, when you accept Jesus, all of those things that you've done, all of those issues that you've dealt with, all of those things that have been a part of your past are no more. And you have to, by faith, step into your new identity as a child of God. So I hope that this teaching has helped somebody. Again, it's not my words, it's the word of God. The Bible says you'll know the truth and the truth will make you free. So be free today as you listen to these words. If you need to go back and re-listen to this teaching, re-watch the videos, that's fine. Go back and do that. But let the truth of God resound in your heart. And I want to encourage you, go back and read this passage of Scripture. As we go through this series together of getting to know Jesus, it's important that the only time you read the passage is not just when you're reading it on the screen. I want you, your homework today is to go back and read John chapter one, verses one through 13. I'm reading out of the NLT version. You can read out of any version. I'm reading out of the New Living Translation. Go back and reread that and you will listen. I feel the power of Jesus Christ right now. You will, as you read that, get things out of those words that we just went through together that we didn't even cover here today. Why? Because again, he is living. He is the living word of God and he will begin to speak to you before you even open up that Bible. If you don't have a New Testament, contact us right now. Info at circlechurch.online. We're going to get you a New Testament Bible. 
But you need to go through that. And as you go through that, before you even read it, you need to just say, Jesus, speak to me. As I read you, as I read the living word of God, speak to me through it. I want to see things that I have never seen before. Read John chapter one, verses one through through 13. Okay, so what's your homework for this week? Come on, in the room. What's your homework for this week? Blah, 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 blah. That was a hodgepodge of words, but it was all the same information. Read John chapter one, verses one through 13, and we're gonna pick up with this series again in our next message in the series of getting to know Jesus. We love you. God bless you. We're here for you.